Okay, so we're kicking off the new series. I'm gonna build my own off-grid or partial off-grid solar power system. And we're gonna kick off here with the design, give a general overview, and then I'm gonna do more detail as I go, as I install it. So this is what I submitted to permitting, and I just got approved, so that's good. <clears throat> Let's go through it kind of quick. So what I got is it's a partial off-grid solar power system. The system will be connected to and will draw power from the grid most of the time and will use energy from the sun when available. The system will not be capable of feeding power back onto the grid, so it's not a grid tie system. In the event of a power outage, such as a thunderstorm, the system will have some limited capability to provide power by drawing from a battery bank and or backup generator. It's going to have a transfer switch to isolate it from the system, from the grid. Um, it's going to be a 4140 watts on the collector, 12 collectors up on the south facing roof, uh, maximum of 4140 watts. It's going to have a roof penetration, go through the attic to the walls, down to a combiner box that's uh, on the wall where you can reach it with a disconnect. That'll be the cutoff for the solar input. Uh, the combined PV will run back up in the wall through the attic, across the walkway, and into my power wall. <clears throat> uh, the power wall looks something like this, a little schematic here. I'm using the Magnum equipment. And it's gonna have two of the 4,400 watt inverters, so a total of 8,800 watts continuous and about double that, 16K peak, with starting up heavy loads like AC or stuff like that. It's gonna have a 370 amp hour, 48 volt battery. I think I'm gonna generate 16 to 20 kilowatt hours a day, but that's just a guess. And we currently use 60 to 80 kilowatt hours a day at our house, and I've already been working on reducing that but not having a whole lot of luck <laughs> partially because we have um, it's kind of a big house and we have three air conditioners three big air conditioners that run non-stop because of it's like 99 degrees down here in Florida it's gonna be on a shingle roof it's an 812 pitch it faces east um, I do have if I show it here I had a better location for it but uh, Current spousal ordinances prevent them from being mounted on the south facing roof. Um, system's probably going to cost me about 18,000, 16 to 18,000 in hardware, probably be about 18,000 when I'm done. I'm going to try and do almost all the work myself, but we'll see how that goes. Might need some help from uh, carpenters, electricians, and maybe some. Uh, consulting from solar power folks. This is the design, big picture. <clears throat> so if we start here with the solar arrays, it's going to be 12 panels, they're the 345 watts each. Four in series, and then three sets of four in parallel. One, two, three, four series, and one, two, in parallel okay to a combiner box that is uh, switched what do you call not switched but well it has a cutoff um, that goes into the charge controller up into um, um, the, I'm getting the two panels from Magnum to wire this thing up so it goes on the DC side this is where all the switches and relays are so everything coming in and going out gets goes through a relay, a breaker. Down into my battery bank, eight of the 12, uh, six volt batteries. So it's 48 volt bank. That comes back up into here. The, the DC side powers both inverters. So they both take DC, they convert it. When the inverter's running, <clears throat> it'll produce AC power to the AC side, which we have more breakers and relays. 
And that'll go out to a main transfer switch, uh, which will, I can selectively put what I want on the solar or switch it back to main. Um, so I got some flexibility there. It's also going to come out on a little secondary output box that'll be in the same room just to plug in like freezer and stuff like that. This is also powered from the utility so, or a backup generator through another transfer switch. So we got AC input. If the batteries are low, it passes the AC input out to the transfer switch. And it uses the AC back down um, into the inverters, which also have battery chargers. I think there's 60 amp chargers in each one. And those are used to charge the batteries. So when the sun's shining, the panels are charging the batteries and we're inverting and we're running off of that. And when the sun's not shining, then we're either off the grid or off a generator and we're charging batteries and we're running off that directly. That's the gist of it. So I went through and I actually selected each wire and each breaker and I explained, you know, I did the little bit of the work here that shows how I selected each thing. So based on the current voltage, um, all kinds of stuff. Um, then shows this is what I selected and I got a little picture of it. I'm going to go through that more later on. We'll have a separate video for these things when they come up. Same thing for the AC wires and breakers. And same thing for the conduit and roof penetrations and cable trays, stuff like that. Okay, then I did have a little more detail on each component of the system, starting with the solar panels. These are from Solar World, 345 watts, and their spec sheet dimensions. I'll go through this more in detail later too. This is how I matched my solar panels to the charge controller. Uh, and it's sort of a design check to make sure you don't go over the maximum voltage, maximum amps, and then you can configure different numbers in series and parallel, and it'll automatically check all that stuff for you. Also takes into account the coldest temperature voltage for this area. So we'll do that. We'll go through in more detail. I'll probably do a separate video on that. Okay, then we get into how is this mounted on the roof. This is a roof mount system. And I'm showing this is the location on the roof and where all the mounting locations are and everything's dimensioned off so that this is what I'm going to use when I actually climb up there and chalk this thing off and start drilling holes. This is what I'm going to use. That just shows um, how it's going to be wired, the schematic, uh, you know, series, 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 and then these three in parallel. Going to be using the Iron Ridge racking system. I think this is a really good one. There are some other good ones out there too, but I like this one. And uh, we'll probably do a separate video on how that little thing works, how you can go through their online tool and select everything you need. And nice thing about this is it calculates all your uh, lift forces all the loading, uh, so as opposed to just going out and building your own rack, um, this gives you a better idea of, you know, this thing's built to withstand 130 mile an hour wind because we're in Florida and we get hurricanes. So uh, hopefully that will be good. This is just a parts list. Uh, roof shows the Iron Ridge. It's pretty typical. You got a flashing and a little L foot, and then your rails. They got some pretty good innovations. That's why one reason I picked them, they seem to be a little bit stronger and they got some just uh, cutting edge type stuff, I thought. Pretty good. The other ones are good too though. Grounding, integrated grounding. And then there's just a bunch of stuff on the seals. This is what they want down at the building department that it's all listed and meets code. Uh, by the way, you know, I think it's a good idea to get your system permitted for a lot of reasons. Um, 
I do kind of uh, one aside thing my wife and I do we sell we buy and sell houses flip them and if you don't if you have stuff in the house that's not permitted you're gonna have a hard time selling it um, not to mention you may be building something that isn't gonna stand up to the wind and it's gonna fall down or burn your house down and if it does and you're not permitted then your insurance probably isn't gonna cover you so it's not that big a deal to go and get it permitted um, in fact I had this design mostly in my head and a little bit written down and when I started writing it down for permitting to meet their requirements I actually learned if, uh, that I didn't have the design as much as I thought I did so the process of writing it out for permitting um, made it better so anyway then just go through all your components it's the charge controller it's the power track here are all the specs um, this thing is uh, good to 6,600 watts input and it has a hundred amp charging capacity so it's pretty beefy you can hook a lot of panels up to it it can take up to 240 volt DC peak uh, worst case and the inverter you notice it's all the magnum stuff so I could have gone and I you know picked a magnum this and a midnight solar that and a Outback something else but and that would probably be fine as long as you match everything but um, by choosing everything in the same family you know you're guaranteed or at least pretty guaranteed that they're all going to work together because they're designed to work together so just to be safe I kind of picked all the stuff from the same company and now it's just a matter of making sure I hook it up right so it doesn't uh, fry here's all the components for the inverter it's 120 240 volts AC output which is nice um, it does not grid tie uh, cranks out 400 4,400 watts each you can put up to four of these together they're all networked and controlled by a router so under low load say you have a thousand watt load it's only going to run one inverter when you get to a certain level which is programmable it'll switch on another inverter and share the load and so on uh, this is important if you look at this this actually shows why this is not a grid tie inverter so for example let's start with the bottom one if you're connected to the grid here you got your AC input a switch this is an automatic transfer switch internal to the inverter it's closed and this is standby mode so the AC is coming in, it gets passed to your loads. It's your critical load panel out here. It also gets fed back through uh, and uh, charges your batteries. So you're getting battery charging and you're getting your loads taken care of. Now, when your batteries are high and you're uh, getting solar input, then you're up here in your in inverting mode so your batteries are providing the power to your inverter you're cranking out your AC on an L1, L2 and neutral which are 120 volts each so 240 across all of them but going back this way pro before it turns on the inverter it, it breaks the connection to the line so this is why you're not grid tie you're not back feeding the line here some people may like that some people may not um, I don't want to be grid tied because I don't want the power companies to have any control over my system. You know, who, who knows what's coming down the line. In my state, they're already trying to pass rules that they can charge us for their infrastructure, even if you're not really drawing any power. And they're trying to crack down on systems being put on the line. So, that's a whole other story, but... Uh, so the batteries, I'm going to use the Trojan L16 Renewable Energy, the B series. Uh, this is a, I think it's 370 amp hour, uh, 6 volt battery. These things are pretty heavy. It was 118 pounds each. I'm going to get 8 of these to be at 48 volts. And this is real important. You want to take a close look at this chart. 
This is why you don't want to drain your batteries down to 50% or lower because this is how long they'll last if you do that. So if you keep your batteries at 80 to 90 percent range they're going to last twice as long as if you drain them down to here. Okay. So here's just how they're wired. And some other stuff. And this just shows you can pause the video if you want and look at this but this this is all in the manual for the uh, Magnum panels, the AC and DC sides. They have a version where they combine them all into one. If you want your wiring to be a little tighter and save some money. Uh, I, want, I wanted some room to spread out so I got the double. But this is the AC side and explains all that. This is the DC side. Comes with the shunt. Okay, more on the wiring. That's if you had four inverters. Which you can do one to four. It's the other side. And this just shows some of the switching you can do where you can bypass the, the system, um, you know, different modes, depending on how you set your breakers here. And I did some analysis. I might get into this a little bit, maybe not, but I never did the actual, the best way to do this is, I forget what the thing's called, but it's a little, it's a little glass bubble thing where you set it down and the area where you want to put your panels and you can reflect the sky and the tree pattern around that area. You can get a really good estimate of what your system's going to generate, which I did. I never, I wish I would have done that, but I didn't do that. Um, you know, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of other videos on how you can size your system, do a load analysis and, um, you know, size your battery size, all this, and that's that's good that's a good way to do it but kind of in the end it seems <laughs> it comes down to uh how much money do you want to spend and how much crap can you fit on your roof <laughs> so so anyway so i went through and did some analysis and this is roughly what it'll generate in a year looked at some other type sun paths and things like that this is the roof where it's going to be mounted it's facing east Okay, and so that brings us to the bill of materials. So, I've got a complete list of everything I think I'm going to need, starting with the Solar World 345 watt solar panels. I need 12 of them. Uh, all these, all, everything on here is I'm hoping to get from the Alt E store. And these are the prices from the Alt E store that are in black. And if it's in red, it means I found it somewhere else, but I'm hoping to get it from Alt E store. Um, but anyway, they've got the Iron Ridge racking. I won't go in through it all, but you can pause it and take a look. Uh, the inverters, enclosures, the routers, the charger, on and on. All this stuff. DC wiring, DC breakers, the AC wire, the AC breakers. And combiner boxes and transfer switches and so even some uh, wire ways to make it all clean. Got about 16,000 in hardware and set aside a couple thousand for electrician and uh, solar consulting, carpenters, whatever else might go wrong. <laughs> well, we'll see. So we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.